in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I was young, and now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They are always generous and lend freely. Their children will be a blessing. Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. Father, we thank you for this word this morning. We ask, Holy Father, that you come now and take complete control of this time. That you speak very self in both the speaker and the hearer. And let your spirit and he alone be seen this morning. As you speak to the hearts of your people. As you deliver us from tendencies and ways. And Father, this morning we know that you are here to bless. So let your people be blessed and receive your blessing through your word this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let me read this in another uh, version. In verse 23, the word says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. The steps of the righteous are ordered by God. What does that mean? Walk is a metaphor for lifestyle. When the Bible speaks of the feet, the Bible is speaking of the way you progress through life. When the Bible speaks of your steps or your walk, the Bible is speaking of your lifestyle. The walk here ref ref refers to the way a person conducts his or her life. We still have this phrase, all walks of life to mean a variety of lifestyle and culture. You see, I was having a conversation with someone the other day, and I said, Jamaicans are hypocritical. Because we want to call other people's food nasty. But we eat tripe, cow tongue, chicken feet, pig feet, liver, gizzards, Goat head with the teeth in the soup. <laughs> These are things other people find disgusting. But our culture tells us it is okay. Are you with me somebody? So the way you walk is being determined by something. And that determination needs to have a better control. Well, let me start with the Haitians now, with the dirty rice. Oh, hey, let's leave that alone, Pastor. I'll stay right there. Step. Misad. The Hebrew word misad means a position of submission like the box cart of a train. The word step in uh, the word misad here is seen three times in the scripture. One of the three literally means train. Now, I got stuck at the train tracks one day. Well, it's happened a number of times. On the east side, where the train has 101 boxes. But you know what is interesting about those 101 boxes? They all follow one engine. 
they all follow. They're all hitched and attached to one engine. Where they go is being determined by one engine. Misad is telling you that your steps must be based on what God is doing. The way you lead your life, the way you conduct your life must be determined by where God is taking you. There are times when we are questioning whether we should or should not. And that's because we have gotten so seared by the, by the world and by the word of the world that we don't understand when God is speaking to us. We can't understand when God's clear voice is telling us to go or no go. So we are, we're wasting time trying to figure out if it is God that is speaking or, or has God spoken at all. Some of us are even worried about whether it's our own ambition and ego that's speaking because we can't hear God's voice. And if you can't hear God's voice, how is he going to lead you? If you can't understand when God is speaking, how is he leading you? The steps of the righteous are ordered by God. When the soldier says left, he means left. He has given you a command. When a soldier finds himself in the bush and his commanding officer says fire, he don't ask why. He fires. Some of us have never been in military life. Some of us have never had the experience of being commanded. Or is that true? Because it's not. How many of us have a job? What's your boss tell you to do? That's a command. And we know how to do and to follow the orders and the direction of the people that have been put above us. Because we fear man more than we fear God. We revere man more than we revere God. In order for you to be ordered by God, you've got to respect and revere God to the point where everything about you is about him. If you read Psalm 37, you will understand that God is detailing the, the, the future and the promise to those that are ordered by him. To those whose lives follow him. And just like a box cart on a train, you have no engine. Oh, let me say that again because some of us are not understanding that we don't direct our own lives. We believe that we have control, but a box truck has no engine. A box cart, sorry, has no engine. And you're either guided by the devil or driven by God. And it's either or. There is no third position. It's either God leads you. Or the devil manipulates you. And when the devil manipulates you, your direction leads to destruction. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man. But the end thereof leads to death and destruction. Because we don't understand. So besad means a position of submission. So you have chosen to submit yourself to the Lord. A soldier has voluntarily joined the army. And I'm not talking about the draft. Because even with the draft, you can choose to go to prison. You can choose not to respond to the call and go to prison. A soldier has chosen to join the army and to be subject to the orders and the commands of those that are put in charge of him. Just like the church, you heard the call and you answered. And having answered, what is your intention? Is it to follow the commands of God 
and the commanding officers that have been placed above you, or is it to cause disruption like this knucklehead? You know, while we were preparing for camp, I mean for um, parade, there was an annual battalion parade. They call it the show of colors, where you dress up in your military finery and you have a parade in front of the brass of the military. So you dress up in your pretty dandan, brothers. And you march rhythmically. And you look pretty. And while we were training for that, they had us out in the sun for a while. And some of us decided, not some of us, but y'all know. We ain't standing for this no longer. So I turned to my friend and I said, we ain't staying out here much longer. He said, don't worry, I'm a fake faint. I said, you ain't fainting before me because if you faint before me, they're going to think I'm following you. So I'm going to faint before you. Disrupting the entire preparation. Once you fall out, now everybody has to take a break. Now everybody has to sit down. No more preparation. Because you've decided to disrupt the work. I'm here to tell you this morning that when God says your steps are ordered, God is telling you that you have voluntarily accepted to respect the authority of God and to follow his word. The Bible says the, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. I can't begin to tell you how much people misunderstand that scripture. That word fear should not have been translated fear. It should have been translated awe and respect. Because you fear God because you know what he can do. But most of us fear man more than we fear God. I was listening to one of my books on the way down. And one of the things they said was, a person who fears a bee has a greater likelihood of being stung by that bee. Why? Because your, your fear produces a vibration. Or some people will say an odor. A dog smells fear. He's more likely to bite someone who's afraid than he is of someone who's not afraid. We live our lives by fear. Some of us will say, no, pastor, I don't do that. That's okay. Spend a little time with yourself in reality and you will see. The steps of the righteous are ordered by God. Why? Because being brave does not mean the absence of fear. And so what God wants man to do is to follow him because he will lead you and he will direct you despite the fears that will overcome you. So the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. And where the engine goes, there you go. It says ordered, and one translation says established, which is the word kun, which means to be steadfast. That means not wavering. Many of us are subject to negative influence. You say, no, not me. Yes, you. Many of us are subject to negative influence. Somebody tells you, you, you shouldn't do that. Do you not contemplate that? Does that not factor in your decision? You come to church 
and somebody might make a joke about the fact that you come to church, you start slowly winding that down. You start out as a child of God on fire for God and you go to your work or you go to school or you go to your playground and somebody makes fun of the fact that you're a Bible thumper and guess what you do? You stop speaking the word as much. We live our lives based on fear. A negative influence is one of the biggest things about us and one of the things that we admit the least. The Bible says, come from among them and be thou separate. God is not telling you to not have interaction with people. But what God is telling you is, the people that are trying to prevent you from being who God called you to be, you need to separate yourself from them. When Peter said, they, not so, Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Because Peter, you might be well intended with your words, but right now the devil is using you to prevent me or to sow a negative seed in my heart to, to stop me from going after my destiny. So get thee behind me, Satan, because you're not going to negatively influence me. You see, they say behind every successful man is a strong woman. Mark. If there's a woman in your life, or if there's a man in your life, and that person is critical and important to you, and you say, I'm going to quit my job and start a no business. And that woman said, you said what? Wait, what? How are we going to pay our bills? How are we going to deal with feeding our children? And you said, I'm going to trust God. I get that, but trust don't go to the supermarket. Behind every successful man is a strong woman. If you have someone in your life that is important to you and they don't encourage your dreams or support your dreams, they are a negative influence. And what you do is being tempered by their thoughts and comments. The steps of, a right, of the righteous are ordered by God or are established by God because God says, put your foot here and you said, I will. Somebody else said, if you put your foot there, ants going to bite you. You don't put your foot there. God wants you to trust him. He said, Moses, stretch forth the rod. And Moses stretched forth the rod. There are people around him that are saying, Moses, look at what you did. You brought us out of Egypt to the Red Sea to die. And God says, Moses, don't hear the voices that are around you. But hear what I am saying. Because the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. Stretch forth your rod, Moses, and see the salvation of your God. Because your God is here to move you through the tests and the trial. To help you to navigate life's troubles. To make sure that the strong waters don't overcome you. The Bible said a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Why? Because he is driven and tossed by every wind of adversity. Every time something bad comes your way, you start to fret and worry. God said, if I have established your ways, you will follow my word. 
Because my word is a two-edged sword cutting asunder to the very bone and marrow. Why? Because I will go to the structure of every negative situation that is set up against you. I will go to the core of every negative thought that is set up against you. My word shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish what it's set for it to accomplish. So God wants you to begin to speak his word into your very life and know that God is going to to bring it to pass because you cannot fail. You cannot fail. Sister, sis, do me a favor, wake him. Because that spirit is preventing him from receiving what God is doing in this season. Come on now. Because there is a spirit. There's a song that says, uh, uh, that says sickness has a name. <laughs> There's a song that says uh, poverty has a name. Why? Because that name is seeking to establish itself uh, above the name that is given above every name. Because at the net mention of his name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. But here's the thing. If you don't know how to call his name with authority, then the demons are going to turn to you and say, I know Paul and I know Jesus. But who are you? Because you don't speak with any authority. Because the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. If God says go into the lion's den, the mouth of the lion shall be sealed. If God says jump into the fire, the thongs of fire shall be cooled. Because the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. David killed the Philistine, Goliath. And then David retreated into Philistine to hide from Saul. Because the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. The Philistines could not touch him. You see, when things go bad, we throw our hands in the air and grab our head. Oh, my God. The time you're spending with the oh, my God. You need to turn and say, here we go, God. Now it's time for us to show what you can do. Because the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. God never told you that you are never going to face challenges. He says, I have overcome the world. And just as I have overcome the world... You are an overcomer. The, the suggestion that you are overcoming suggests that there is something that you're going to have to overcome. He says you're going to get knocked down. But he says you will not be utterly destroyed. They're going to take stuff away from you. But it doesn't mean that's the end of it all. They're going to deny you stuff, but it does not mean that that denial is forever. He says, you're going to lose some stuff, but that's okay because I shall reestablish. He says, I shall return unto you what the canker worm and the palmer worms have taken from you. He says, I shall pour out in the latter days the former and latter rains. Why? Because I'm going to pour into your life everything that was taken from you. Because the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. What the devil is seeking to do shall not have any success in your life. Why? Because every weapon that is formed against you shall be cast down doesn't mean that weapons are not going to be formed. It doesn't mean that you're not going to face the test and trials. God says, go through it with me. Walk with me a little bit. See what I can do for you. See what I can do with a little bit of faith. Because the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. So let your lifestyle prove the strength of God and strengthen your faith. You see, in order for you to do that, you've got to know who is God. 
who is God? This name God it seems so ubiquitous. It's a big word. It means everything. It just kind of covers everything. So what exactly is God? You know that people have replaced the word God with a few things, right? God is now the universe. God is now the atmosphere. God is now Speak it into the atmosphere. No. Speak it to God. Speak it to God. It's not the universe. He's not source. Oh, yeah, y'all ain't heard the source part? Yeah. God is not the X factor. What is the X factor? It is the missing link in the Big Bang Theory. They're saying that there's a missing link that we haven't found yet, so we call it X Factor. So they've replaced the name of God with that. You say, what's the name of God? <laughs> God has no name. Wait, wait, wait. So why do we call him Jehovah Jireh? And why do we call him Jehovah Nisi? Yeah. Why do we call him Jehovah Shalom? Why, why do we call him Jehovah Teskenu? Why do we call him El Shaddai? Why do we call him Jehovah Rapha? Why do we call him Jehovah Nisi? Don't get me jumping in this place today. But here's what is interesting. None of those are his name. They are all his attributes. God my provider. God my peace. God, my healer. God, my buckler. You see, the interesting thing is we don't know God really. You see, for a husband and a wife to dwell in peace, they've got to know each other. Was, they've got to know. If I go to Sister Booby Shoe's house in the blue and white, and I say, Brother Booby Shoe said, that is blue, right? It's green. And the green and white. And I say, Brother Booby Shoe said, to give me the keys to the BMW, the first thing she's going to do is lean on her understanding of Brother Booby Shoe. Because I know my husband is not going to tell you to give you the keys to my car. That he bled blood, sweat, and tears to help me to own. So I'm going to give it to you. Hold on a second. Let me give him a ring. Stay right there. Don't move. And close the door. We're going to have a private conversation. But I ain't calling Brother Booby Shoe. I'm going to go inside and I'm going to say, chat boat. Think me stupid. Think me fool. But that's okay. I got something for you. Stay right there. We'll be right back. You've got to know who God is. And understand that whatsoever situation you find yourself in. God would do this. What is he going to do? When you're sick. He said by his stripes. When you're broke, hey, remember, your father has a cow on a thousand hill. I only want one. When you're depressed, he says, I am your peace. I give you peace that passes all understanding. Because when you're going through your situation, I need you to be different from people. Why? Because you have a hope in me that is established in who I am. So who is God? What are his attributes? I'm going to close with a few of them. Your God is immutable. 
he does not change. He will never change. Your God does not change. The Bible says, same God today, yesterday, and forevermore. He's the same God that worked miracles, and he can do it again. He's the same God that delivered his children, and he will do it again. He's the same God that healed the sick, and he will do it again. He's the same God that raised the dead, and he will do it again. He's the same God that had compassion, and he will do it again. He is immutable. He cannot change. He's omnipotent. That means he has all power. He is omnipotent. You see, um, the word potent, you get from that, the potentia, the potential. He has the ability to do it all. He has the ability to do it all. What do you need your God to do? Because he has the ability. If your steps are ordered by God, you know that whatsoever you take to his throne, it shall be done. Because he is omnipotent. He has all the power and authority in his hand. There is nothing too hard for your God. His hand is not short and he is not slack concerning his promises to you because his word is yea and amen. Because if God says you are more than a conqueror, God told you you have already conquered this situation. If your God tells you that you are the head and not the tail, he is telling you that you are established above the rest. He is omniscient. He knows all things. Um, You know what is interesting? Some of us need to know how to send God before us. When you go on an interview (laughs) and you don't know exactly what they're looking for, you say, God, I know I can do this job, but I don't know what the hot spot for this person is. Years ago, I used to work for Kirby Vacuum Cleaner. They used to teach you how to find people's hot button. When you go into the person's house, they tell you, look around and see what is important. If they've got a million pictures of their grandchildren, that's their hot button. But God knows when you go on that interview, God knows what the interviewer is looking for. So you go in with the confidence that God is going to lead you and he's going to direct you and you're going to impress this person so that this person is going to give you what you desire because he gives you the very desires of your heart. God knows. God knows. God knows. And if you know that he knows, you don't walk in doubt. You don't walk in fear. You don't walk in mistrust. You don't walk in hopelessness. If you know that he knows, you understand that there is nothing impossible for you. Because with God, all things are possible. Because he knows. And so if you know that, he orders your steps. He's omnipresent. Watch this. Does that mean he is everywhere? Or does that mean he is always everywhere? Hold on a second. What's the difference? He's everywhere. At all times. He might be taking care of Sister Bev's affairs, and I got a need, but I got to wait on her. No. He is everywhere. He is everywhere at all times. 
there's no waiting for him to move on your case because he's busy over there. There's a song that says, I know you're busy, but ain't no busy. Ain't no, what you busy with? He's everywhere at all times. Do you know that? Then he should order your steps. He is wise. Full of perfect, unchanging wisdom. Here's the thing. They say you're smarter as you get older. You know what that means? It means your 20-year-old wisdom changed when you turned 30 because you figured out some stuff. And when you turn 40, your 30-year-old wisdom changed because you figured out some more stuff. And when you turn 50, your 40-year-old wisdom changed because you figured out some more stuff. That don't work with God. Because God's wisdom is eternal. God don't need to learn more. He already knows. He already knows. You can trust him because he's not going to change his mind. He's not going to have to come into the pulpit and say, oops, I made a mistake. What he's telling you is forever. Trust him. Two more. God is faithful. What? God is faithful. God is faithful. Hold on. Hold on. God is faithful. He is eternally and unchangingly true. You see, you might come to pastor and say, hey, pastor, I have a little need I need your help with. And pastor might say, yeah, 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 I got you. And then when the time comes for the need to be fulfilled, pastor said, you see what happened was something came up. And I will not be able to help you anymore. Nothing comes up with God. Nothing changes with God. His circumstances and his situation never change. If God says, I will do for you, if his word is yea and amen, it is yea and amen. Because whatever you need from God, if God says it's yours, he's not changing his mind. Now somebody might say, um, but not my will, but yours be done. What? What? But I said, I said, if you believe in my word, if you abide in my word, let me say it the right way, and my word abides in you, then you shall ask what you will. Ask whatever you want of the Father, and it shall, what is this not my will, but yours be done. He is the author and finisher of your faith. Whatsoever you have on your heart, God put it there. And he is the one that's going to bring it to pass. Stop wavering in your asking and your desiring. Some of us want to be healed. But you know, I know it's a little difficult because this is a serious illness. Really? Death is a name. And God said to Lazarus, come forth. That means God rebuked death and said, release him. Oh, somebody didn't hear that. Whatever your condition is, when God speaks to you, God is telling that condition, release him. And let, me, let me wrap up. God is love. God, God is love. You, you, you know, they say the divorce rate is 50%. It's not actually true. 
they, they, they use a simplified calculation to calculate the 50%. The divorce rate is somewhere around 20%. But what they do is, if 100 people get married this year and 50 people divorce, then the divorce rate is 50%. Divorce rate is more like 20%. But there are people who go into marriages today with the mentality, if it don't work, I can always get a, say it, because I promised my wife that word not coming out of my mouth. If it doesn't work, I can always get a divorce. God is love. He's never going to fall out of love with you. What? No matter what you do. They stuck him in his side. They spat on him. They beat him with the cat and nine whip. They nailed him to a cross. And he stayed up there and he said, Father, forgive them. God is love. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. That he gave. Watch this. That he gave his Jaden. That he gave his Kayla. That he gave his Javon. That he gave his Val. That he gave his Ian. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes God is love. He should order your steps. And finally, watch this. He is holy. He is holy. Here's, here's what is interesting about him being holy. It means that he is perfect. When Solomon told the two mothers, okay, we're going to solve this dispute. We're going to cut the baby in half. You get half and, and get half. What? Solomon was exercising the wisdom of God to bring about a righteous result. God at all times is exercising his wisdom in your life to bring about a righteous result. A result that is going to be best for you. You might not like the path to it. You might not like the fact that you've got to go through the wilderness to get through it. There's a saying, you've got to go through it to get to it. You might not like the path, but God is holy and perfect in all his ways. He makes no mistake, and he knows what he is doing on your behalf. You should trust him and let him order your steps, because he knows that if you've got to go through the mountain, the mountain is the best way to get to what you need. If you've got to go through the ocean, the ocean is the best way for you to get to what you need. The steps of the righteous are ordered by God. You should trust him. You should believe in him. You should hope in him. You should seek his voice. You should hear and answer every time he calls. Stand with me. The steps of the righteous are ordered by God. It is not saying that God is forcing you to do what he wants you to do. It is saying that if you believe in who God is, you will walk according to his precepts and his laws. You will walk according to his word and his promise because his promises are true. He cannot fail and he will not fail. He cannot lie and he will not lie. He is all powerful. He is all knowing and he is eternal and all you have to do is commit your ways to God and he shall order your steps he shall order your steps there's a song that says order my steps in your word dear Lord lead me and guide me every day send your anointing Father, I pray, 
order my steps in your word. I want to walk worthy, my God, and do your will. If you order my steps, the world is ever changing, but you remain the same. If you order my steps, I praise your name. If you order my steps, I'll have reason to praise. If you order my steps, I'll have reason to celebrate. If you order my steps, I'll have reason to rejoice. If you order my steps, I will have reason to have joy, to have peace, to have understanding. Why? Because I know that I know that I'm on the right path. Order my steps because the steps of the righteous are by choice ordered by God. You are a box cart attached to an engine. Which engine are you attached to? There are only two choices. We might think we have other choices. We might have been convinced that we dictate and determine our own lives. You're a box cart. You have no engine. You have no power. In and of yourself, you are nothing. But with God, you are everything. Order my steps, Lord. Order my steps. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Hey, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your word this morning, oh God. Because when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard. There is a standard by which we live in you. There is a standard by which we hope in you. There is a standard by which we cannot fail, we cannot lose, and we cannot die. Because you said in your word, if we believe in the Lord Jesus and confess with our mouth, we shall have eternal life. We cannot fail if our hand is in you. And this morning, Father God, I declare right now in the name of Jesus that every stumbling block, every blockage, every plan, every established imagination against your truth shall be torn down in the lives of your people. And faith shall be established and your people shall stand on your word and declare your power and your authority in every circumstance and every situation. Every day we rise, we shall rise with the word of God. Every day we rise, we shall rise with the hope of God. Every day we rise, we shall rise in the truth of who you are. Every day we rise. We shall rise victorious. We shall no longer be defeated, downtrodden. We shall no longer be destroyed by hopelessness, by the works and the plans of the enemy. You said we have but one enemy, the enemy of our soul. He cannot win because you have already rebuked him. You have already given us the victory. Open the eyes of your people. Remove the scales from our eyes that we will see more than just the physical. And we will understand more than just what is presented before us. As your prophet said to the young man, they that are with us are greater than they that are against us. You have sent a host of angels to take charge over 
each and every one of us. We are established on a mountain. And our feet cannot be moved. Order our steps, Lord. That is our plea. That is our cry. That is our commitment. Order our steps, dear Lord. Lead and guide us every day. Thank you for your word this morning. In Jesus' name.